OK, so let's talk about how to build a set list in Arrangement View. Um, and again, you can build a set list in Session or Arrangement View. Um, as I've done this more and more, I think there's a lot of features to Arrangement View that make it a little more beneficial and easy for worship. Uh, when you're playing back with a lot of content and you need a lot of freedom, there's a lot of things you can do in Arrangement View just straight right out of the gate that take a little bit more work in Session View. So what I want to do is show you guys how to build a set list in, um, in Arrangement View. So what I'm going to do, remember one of the tips we talked about was start from a template. So I'm going to open up my template that I use uh, to build my set. And I'm going to build the set on top of that. So I'm going to use three songs, just build a three song template uh, a worship set. And just talk you through how I do this. So the first thing, I'm going to use this first song, The Lord Our God. Um, again, I have everything in the same format, so it transfers over and loads in uh, exactly the same. So I'm just going to drag this song in, my very first song. My personal preference, and again, there's no right or wrong way to use live. Uh, this is just my personal preference and what I've developed over the years. Um, I like to keep just this up here, so I don't want multiple click tempo stop markers, original tracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this content, select it, and then I'm going to cut it. And I'm just going to drag them right up to the top so that I only have one set of click tempo, stop markers, and original track. And then I'm going to delete this one. And I have all these locators automati automatically uh, set in this template. And I'm going to go in and just rename this. So I want this to be one. I'm going to keep the number so I can see it. And then I'm just going to write the Lord our God. Okay? Then the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take locator two. And I'm just going to drag it to the end of song one. Now, here's a really cool tip that's going to speed up this process. It's going to make it a lot easier. Is if as you drag, you press minus, you'll zoom out, and you can get that exactly where you want it a lot easier. So song two is going to be Whom Shall I Fear? So I'm going to add that in. Okay. And then every song that I add into my set list, except for my first one, I want to add a time signature change. Um, that's important if we are jumping around our set list and we have songs that are different tempos. I want to make sure that I insert a time signature change for every one. So Whom Shall I Fear is 4-4. Four, four. And then I'm going to go over here to my browser, Whom Shall I Fear, and drag this in. Now, don't be alarmed if as you're doing this and you go to drag it in. Um, you drop it right where it says Drop Files and Devices here. Um, and it's going to load in. You see, everything is the same format. But it's going to load in right below this one. Now, obviously, we don't want it to stay there, because if we played it, it would sound awful and sound terrible. So what I'm going to do is just select this content, select all of it, and then I'm going to cut it. And then this is what's really cool. I'm going to press 2, because this is already assigned, because I'm using my template. And then I'm going to do Paste. And then it's going to paste it right there at song 2. Um, now, again, I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier which is I just want to select this top content. Um, now, one of the tricks I've learned in doing this is before you deselect it, hold Shift, and then just click above that, and then do your Cut command, and then Paste. And then we get rid of this, right? And we'll get rid of that content. Now we have Song 1, and we have Song 2 loaded into our set list. You'll notice, though, if you look throughout here, I have this labeled so that I know there's time signature changes within Whom Shall I Fear. Um, this is really important that if you have time signature changes in your, or, uh, in your song, you want to make sure you add those across your song. Because if you're jumping around in your song, you always want to make sure Live lines up one with the track lines up with what Live has. So you can see here, even though we start back 4-4, four, four, that doesn't look right. And the reason that doesn't look right is this is treating um, all of this as 4-4. Four, four. So all I have to do is right click below where that measure number is, do insert time signature change, do 3, 4, then do it again for 4, 4. Then we'll zoom out, go to our other one here, 3, 4, and then 4, 4. And then I'll just double check that's our last one. Yep. So now we have song 1, song 2 loaded in. Now I'm going to press 3, which is automatically going to select locator 3. I could zoom in if I needed to. And then I'm going to drag this to the right of song two. Again, pressing minus so that it goes faster. Going to drop it right here. I know the next song is in 4-4, four, four, so I'm going to add that in. I can even go ahead and rename it if I want. And this is Because of Your Love. Now, both of these songs, um, I have stems for them. Um, my third song, though, all I have is just a click, right? So I don't have stem content or multi-track content for it. So I'm going to go in and drop this in, though. And it's the same process as the other ones. 
I'll drop it right in at the beginning of my set list. Once it drops in, I'm going to select it, highlight it, cut it, press 3 because it's song 3, paste it, and then I'll cut it again, click here, paste that, and now I'm going to delete these guys. So what's cool about this is I have song 1, 2, and 3 loaded in. Um, things look nice and neat and organized, but what I'm going to do is go a step further. I'm going to delete these other locators that I'm not using. Okay, we'll Get rid of those really quickly. And then I want to make this look as nice and neat and as clean as I can uh, for my drummer, my keyboard player, whoever it is that's going to be running this and using it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to song 1, and I like to select all this, and I'm just going to choose a color that's going to represent the first song. So I'm going to highlight it and then right click. I'll select red since that's my first color. Then I want to change the color of this track to red. And then I'm going to unfold this group track, go to all these individual clips, and I'm going to make those red as well. So now song one is all red. Um, I lucked out song two is a color that I didn't already have, and it's already uh, the right color, the track as well. And then finally I'll just go to my third track here, Because of Your Love. And I'm going to change the color of that. Let's do something different. Let's go there. OK. So now I have my set list built in arrangement view. Um, I have song one, two, and three. I have time signature changes plugged into each of those. Uh, you'll note, like we talked about earlier, because I'm using my tempo track, when I start song two, it automatically changes my tempo to what that needs to be. When I start, start song one, it's going to automatically set and change my tempo to what it needs to be. And then the same thing with song three, even though this is just click. So I did that. I built this set list in less than seven minutes. Um, and it's ready to go for Sunday. So that's how we can create a set list in arrangement view.